In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a firewall without using universal firewall or any programs, basically just using IP tables that is built into Linux. This video is brought to you by Purism, makers of the Librem 5 phone. Pre-orders are about to go up in July, so be sure to pre-order yours today because they're releasing in Q3 of 2019. Now this method is typically used by many system admins out there for Linux, just because all these things are just baked into Linux and you don't have to install a bunch of programs. So it's really important to keep your install very lean, especially in an enterprise environment. That's why it's really good to know this. That, and I actually like this a lot better than UFW and other firewall programs out there, just because it's so easy once you start doing it over and over that it, it's just, not cumbersome at all and it makes more sense to me than having to understand a whole different program when I could communicate directly with the built-in firewall in Linux. So uh, that's why I do it this way and honestly by doing it in this method it only takes me about 30 seconds to a minute to set up a firewall which is better than actually going to out and downloading one. So uh, that's why this exists and why you probably want to use this if you're running a server, especially on SSH as well, the tar pitting section of this, which I go over briefly, uh, is extremely important because it'll help secure your SSH down because most people leave it up and it can be brute force attacked and will be brute force attacked, especially if it's open to the external world. So very important to do these things. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, firewall is, is extremely important when exposed to the outside world. Here is a quick rundown. I'm about to jump on the command line and show you all of the scripts that are part of this uh, GitHub I've put together. But just know if you're on Debian based installs to make these rules permanent, which you want every, uh, every reboot, you want them to be permanent. So on Debian based systems, you would only do this top half where it says that and install this extra program basically to save all our IP tables. Arch based systems, you're simply writing to the IP rules uh, table. And then once that's actually written on every reboot, it'll just automatically load those. Just know that if you go ahead and clear out those rules by doing the firewall dash down, um, you do need to rewrite the IP tables rules because as soon as you reboot, all your rules will come back. And then also on RHEL and CentOS based distributions, this is probably my favorite way to manage a firewall just because they have it all kind of built in and I really like the just the listings and everything's a little bit better and well thought out, but rightfully so. It's, it's meant for enterprise and if you're doing a lot of stuff in IP tables, it's typically enterprise. But I wanted to kind of show this just as a fast firewall setup and I'm going to jump on the command line now and show you the actual commands we use to set up the firewall. Okay, so to start out with, we actually logged in as root here to make these changes to our server. This is setting up the perfect firewall. And I'm not gonna use UFW or any other utilities either. I'm gonna do strictly IP tables. So I'm gonna go to the ETC directory. And if you haven't already installed Git, I'm on uh, Arch, so I'm gonna just do SY Git. Now, I've already actually installed Git and it's up to date, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this installation. But then I'm going to just clone uh, these files from my GitHub. So let's go github.com Chris Titus tech forward slash firewall setup. And it went ahead and did that. So if we go cd firewall setup, we are now in. Now as PD, PWD, we see we created a new folder in ETC called firewall setup. Inside this folder, there's four files. The readme, which shows you kind of what everything does. Firewall, which we'll do a cat firewall. And you'll see kind of all the policies in here. Now, if I nano into this, let's say you need to change them. Uh, leave all these in here. These are mainly, uh, I'll walk through each line just so you understand what this does when editing your system. That's super important. If you don't know what a script does, definitely don't run it. Um, but basically this is echoing to say, hey, ignore 
ping requests or ICMP echoes um, from broadcasts, drop source routed packets, uh, make sure the TCP SN SYN cookie protection is on, uh, don't accept ping redirect requests both ways here, um, enable source address spoofing protection, log packets with impossible source addresses, flush chains, allow unlimited traffic from loopback interface, which is basically just the local machine. Set the default policies to drop all traffic. Uh, that's basically how firewall works. It drops all traffic it sees externally, and then you make rules to basically punch holes in that to allow certain things through. Previously initiated and accepted exchange bypass rule checking. This just says, hey, if it's already established, don't kill it. And this rate limit SSH is key. Uh, definitely don't mess around with this. This basically rate limits four SSH requests per minute. Um, and this is a good way, I, it's called tar pitting. And what it does is it just slows, let's say someone's spamming your server for SSH or trying to do a brute force attack. Uh, by doing these three things, it definitely helps a lot. Uh, just basically to slow down and just say, hey, we only accept four SSH requests per minute. And I haven't had any issues with this. Uh, I've run it on a lot of servers, especially ones exposed to the outside world that have SSH enabled. And I, I haven't seen any uh, problems with this. My main thing was, hey, what happens if, uh, you know, someone's spamming the server with SSH and then I try and log in through SSH? I actually haven't had any issues with that. Allow certain ports to be available. Um, these two ports, one's Minecraft and the Dimap plugin as well. So it's actually allowing the TCP port of uh, 25,565 and the TCP port of 8123. Obviously you can just do a cut, control K, control U in nano, and then you can do another control U and you'll see that other line and then you can just kind of change it to your needs. Um, now these are actually commented out, but if it's just HTTP and HTTPS, uh, port 80 and port 443 respectively, just uncomment these. You see how they have the little hash sign in front, you just go ahead, close that. And just delete those that in a space and it would open up these ports. Um, so those two ports are very common to open up. Um, so if you're looking to use this script for it, just know you can just remove that little comment and you're off and going. And then it gives you a sample UDP rule just in case you need to actually whitelist any UDP. And this allows pinging of your server. Now all the other stuff, drop all other traffic and then just print when the script is done. So we'll go ahead and exit out and I'm not gonna save anything. So if we do a ls all, these aren't actually executable. So to make them executable so we can run them, I like to do just a chmod plus x firewall and then an asterisk. That'll pull all the stuff named firewall and make it executable. So if we go up, you'll notice they're executable now and now we can just do firewall. Now it went ahead and initiated all these and made them part of the policy. Simply test this by going IP tables dash N capital L. It would help if you add an S on the end. And then we see all of our rules. Now let's say something happens and you want to take down these rules. You can just go firewall dash down and that clears out all of them. And we can double check this by doing the IP tables dash NL and you'll see all those rules are cleared out. Now let's say you just wanted to refresh your firewall, take it down, basically clear out the rules and then reinitialize it. You can do firewall reload. And basically what this does is it strips out everything and then does it. And if we look at our tables, you'll see it has all our changes. Now this would have to be launched every time your computer starts, unless you save it. All right, let's go ahead and enable IP tables at startup. So we'll do system control enable IP tables and it will go firewall setup and run our firewall rule again to push the IP tables to the actual be saved on startup. Let's just simply type IP tables 
dash save. And then we output this to etc IP tables, IP tables rules. And then we'll go ahead and reboot. Now that we've done the save, uh, we can see what happens on reboot. And we'll just, now we're logged back in, IP tables dash N and L, and you'll see all our rules are there. So very important to run that IP tables dash save and then the actual greater than sign and then push it to the ETC IP tables directory. So when you do that and you push it to that rules file in that directory, uh, you'll have it persistent and it will retain through reboots. But if you just run the firewall script on startup, uh, that would also do it. But I always say, hey, it's best to put it in the IP tables rules. That way, when you reboot your server or whatnot, it'll all be there regardless if the script runs or not. And likewise, if you need to blow out any of these rules, make sure you do the IP tables dash save uh, back to the rules. Otherwise, as soon as you reboot, all these rules will come right back. So you're, there you have it. That's the famous fast firewall setup that I do all the time on pretty much any server that's pointing outward to the outside world. I always set it up this method. I typically just uh, set this up. I actually had it in a text file and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put this on GitHub and that way you can just clone it or anybody can clone it and then just change what they need out of it because it makes just life a lot easier when setting up a firewall when you have something like this and a lot more secure and you'll notice that your traffic and those types of things from the outside world when they see you're doing these types of things typically they'll leave you alone i mean you're still going to get hit a lot on ssh just because if you open up port 22 to the outside world it's one of those things you're just going to get hammered but with all that said let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and a big shout out to my patrons without you i couldn't make these videos and I'll see you in the next one.